G'day, I'm James, and welcome to this bonus video on the beauty and the thinking behind quadratics. Now there's one thing I haven't done in this course, and not all curriculum do what I'm about to do, but is actually give answers to every single possible quadratic equation. We often said some equations have no solutions, but if you change your concept of number, then some people say, aha, they do have solutions and I want you to write them down. So let me tell you the story of number. In fact, I'll give you the story in a very strange way, as though it's the story about history of equations. Well, what do I mean by that? All right, so the story of numbers, here it comes. The story of number through the lens of equations. Very unusual way to do it. So, when you're very young, the very first types of numbers you learn are the positive whole counting numbers. The numbers that actually count things. You know, there's, there's one block, there's two blocks, or three blocks, or four blocks, or five blocks. The positive whole numbers, the counting numbers. Um, some people might include zero in the list, some people might not. Just a matter of style, if you do or don't, that's fine. But there are the positive whole numbers, and maybe zero, called the counting numbers. And these counting numbers are good for solving some equations. For example, I could solve the equation x plus five equals eight with the counting numbers. X would have to be three. Grand. So the counting numbers are definitely good for solving some equations, but not all equations. For example, if I asked us to solve the equation x plus eight equals five, then we're in trouble. Then we're in trouble. So what we can do then is invent a new type of number that helps us solve these types of equations. And that would be the counting numbers along with the negative counting numbers. Uh, let's add to this list negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, get, add all the negative integers. In fact, we call this entire set the set of integers. So now we can solve those ones with the counting numbers and now we fix that problem and can solve that equation with integers as well. Fabulous! And the integers are good for solving all sorts of equations. I can even solve something like 2x equals 8 or 2x equals negative 8. That's fine. But the negative integers are also deficient. Because if I gave you the equation, say, solve 3x equals 8, we're in trouble. Oops, can't do that one. So we invent a new type of number to help solve equations like that. And we call them fractions. So we've gone from the counting numbers to the integers and now to the set of all fractions. And the fractions are great. Now we can solve equations like that and all sorts of other wonderful equations. Except you soon discover there are certain equations that can't be solved with fractions. And the classic example is x squared equals 2. Because it turns out, and it's a bit hard to prove, and it, has, and it requires proof, it's not obvious, that the square root of 2 is a number that cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. Square root of 2 is not a fraction. You cannot solve that equation with fractions. Okay, so then the next thing you do is you start inventing this notion of irrational numbers. So you've got all the counting numbers, so then became the set of all the integers, the positive and negative counting numbers, and then you add to that all the fractions, now we're going to add to that all the irrational numbers, and we've got the real number system. And we think, great, now we're going to solve those types of equations. Except, people discover there's still more equations you can't solve with just the reals. Namely, x squared equals negative 1, for example. Oh, golly gee. So then people invented, okay, let's have a special number with the property that its square is negative 1. So we can talk about the square root of negative 1, and then we invent something called the complex number system. But then things get scary, because it feels like we're doing this journey forever. Whenever we solve one problem, a new problem arises. When we solve one problem, a new problem arises. A new problem arises. It keeps going on forever. Will the story ever stop? Here is the amazing thing, one of the greatest discoveries of the 1800s. The German mathematician Friedrich Gauss proved the story stops there with the complex numbers. Once you've got the complex numbers, you're done. You can solve every type of algebraic equation like this, every polynomial equation with complex numbers. You need no more numbers. Complex numbers will solve everything, which is amazing. That's actually phenomenal. And people call that the fundamental theorem of algebra. Namely, it's a key theorem of algebra that complex numbers are enough. Everything stops with the complex numbers. The story doesn't keep going, at least on the story of these types of equations. Wow. Hence, hence, back to quadratics for school students. Some people say, well, we know the fundamental theorem of algebra says that everything stops at complex numbers. We might as well have all our students solve everything with complex numbers. Let's do the full complete story. You know, it's a bit strange for students because they don't know why we need to do this, but in this context, it says, let's just be complete. So let me give an example of a complex equation, of a quadratic equation that we would say we can't solve. Uh, let's see, make something up. What would be a good one? How about, how about x squared plus 10x plus 29 equals zero? Great. All right, 
So if we try to solve this one, we've got a couple of, well, a number of methods here. Um, I'm going to do my square method. Um, if I drew my box, I see I'd probably want the number 25 there. I'd probably make this x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals negative 4, in which case it's really x plus 5 squared is negative 4, in which case, oh, we would have said before, something squared equals negative 4, doesn't happen, no solutions. But with complex numbers, we like to believe there is something called the square root of negative 1, in which case I could do this. x plus 5 is the square root of negative 4, or the negative version of that, yeah. Uh, square root of negative 4 is the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, or square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. Whoops, negative version of all that. Square root of 4 I can do at least is, two, is, I can at least do is 2. And people like to call the square root of negative 1, I'll use the word the there, they like to call a square root of negative 1, i. It's an imaginary number, like I can't really do it, but as a system of algebra it seems complete. In fact, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, it is complete, or I could do the negative version of that. So people would say, okay, x plus 5 is that, so that means my solution is x is negative 5 plus 2i, or negative 5 minus 2i. And I've now solved the system completely in the world of complex numbers, that equation completely in complex numbers. Great. So that's how it would work, and some curricula might actually require students to write their answers all the way through like this. If you did the quadratic formula on this one, you'll get the same issue. Uh, x would be, what is I don't really have it in my head because you know I don't memorize these things. Uh, negative b plus or minus square root of is it b squared is 100 minus 4 times a times c. Uh, 429s, what is that? That's like 116 or something uh, all over twice a. Did I do that correctly? I'm really, I'm really not good at memorizing things. Uh, so this is what, negative 10 plus or minus square root of negative 16 all over 2. Uh, square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1, so that's 4 times uh, i. Square root of negative 1 is i. So this is negative 10 plus or minus 4i all over 2. Yeah, negative 5 plus or minus 2i. Same answers. All right, so just be aware that sometimes a textbook or an exam or a curriculum might want you to write your answers, even the ones that we say, no solution, actually do have a solution if you go all the way up to this funny thing called i. Imagine there is a square root of negative 1, because in the world of complex numbers, every quadratic equation can indeed be solved.